The Federal Trade Commission issued a ban on so-called worker non-compete clauses. What non-competes do is they keep talent locked up. Getting rid of non-competes will be good for workers, it'll be good for the labor market, but it's also going to be good for our economy. It's literally giving the middle finger to all the business owners that are creating jobs. I work my ass off training this guy for two, three, four, five, ten years. Then the non-compete doesn't protect me. He leaves and starts a company and t attacks me. We got 26,000 public comments. 25,000 of them were in support of of a What's up, everyone? I'm attorney Ryan, and we have some huge news this month. Honestly, I did not think this was going to happen. But the FTC voted to ban nearly all non-compete agreements in the United States. This will be absolutely huge if it goes through, and already there's battle lines being drawn about how it's going to affect working class people and how it'll affect the economy. Now, the Federal Trade Commission, or FTC, estimates that working class people are going to see a boost of up to $488 billion over the next decade because of the ban on non-competes. So, of course, the FTC is excited about this and workers' rights advocates like myself are excited, but there are interest groups who are, let's just say, not pleased. It's literally giving oh, the middle brother, finger to all the business this owners. Guy stinks. Again, I can't stress enough how huge this is going to be if it goes through despite the opposition. And because it is so huge, naturally, a lot of details got lost in the headlines. So in today's video, I'm breaking down how the FTC ban would actually work, when it would take effect, how it will affect working people. And even though the ban has been voted on, it hasn't taken effect. So non-competes are still valid. But please, before we get into it, if you like learning about your rights at work and you want to have your finger on the pulse of what's happening in employment law, please hit that like button to tell YouTube you enjoy this content and please subscribe so you don't miss updates. Okay, back to the story. On April 23rd, 2024, the Federal Trade Commission or FTC voted in a three to two vote to ban employment contracts which contain non-compete agreements in the United States. This is not taking immediate effect. First, there is a minimum 100 120 day waiting period before the ban could possibly take effect. In the meantime, anti-worker organizations like the U.S. Chamber of Commerce have vowed to fight this any way they can. For the record, the U.S. Chamber of Commerce is not a government agency. It is a pro-business special interest group, kind of like the National Restaurant Association. And unfortunately, its pro-business interests sometimes result in them advocating for lower pay and less protections for workers. Facts are facts, folks. But if the special interest groups do not succeed and the ban does take effect, it will prohibit employers from forcing workers to sign any new non-compete agreements. The ban will be retroactive. That means if you're currently under a non-compete right now, or you have one in your employee file, it will get nullified, void, gone, donezo. But don't get too excited just yet, because yes, the ban will be retroactive. Yes, it will nullify any agreements, even if you've already signed them, but there are exceptions. Specifically, high-level employees engaged in policy making decisions who make at least $151,164 a year can still be held by a non-compete agreement. So if that's you, your non-compete will still be valid even if the ban takes effect. Well, the anti-worker lobby says that this ban will make it open season for people to raid companies' private information, their proprietary information, and they're saying it'll be the end of fair competition and innovation as we know it. But that's just not true. A valid non-disclosure agreement will still be enforceable. The Defend Trade Secrets Act, non-solicitation clauses, and all trademark, copyright, and intellectual property protections are still in effect. So even though an employer can't restrict you from seeking another job somewhere better that pays more money, they can still stop you from taking their secret information. Again, the goal of the FTC ban is to release the roughly one in five Americans who are trapped in low-paying or abusive workplaces. As FTC Chair Lena Khan said, quote, we heard from employees who, because of non-competes, were stuck in abusive workplaces. One person noted when an employer merged with an organization whose religious principles conflicted with her own, a non-compete kept her locked in place and unable to freely 
switch a job that didn't conflict with her religious practices. This has huge implications. An employer who steals your wages, violates your rights, bullies you, abuses you, belittles you. For the first time, millions of Americans will be free to leave that employer. A few moments later. The FTC estimates that non-competes cost American workers and the economy $300 billion every year. That sounds like a lot because it is a lot. So you might be asking how? How does a simple sheet of paper that says you can't work for a competitor do this kind of damage? Ironically, I think the best way to see why non-competes are generally bad for the economy and even worse for workers is to look at the people who are opposing the FTC's ban on non-competes. Because back in 2023, the FTC got a lot of hostile attention for proposing a restriction or an outright ban on these things. That drew negative press from, well, the players you'd expect. The Society for Human Resources Management, or SHRM, JP Morgan, Goldman Sachs, Morgan Stanley, and the US Chamber of Commerce. You know, all the great champions of the working class. That, that was sarcasm, that was sarcasm. Basically anyone who represents companies against employees doesn't want the ban and they wanna keep non-competes exactly how they are. And in the great battle between people like me who do want to restrict non-competes and people like them who wanna keep non-competes, we're actually raising the same exact argument. And that's what's so crazy about this. Supporters of a ban on non-competes say that the reason we want them gone is because they cost the economy billions of dollars every year, they hurt workers' salaries, they artificially suppress wages, and they limit fair competition. But the opponents of the ban, the people who want to keep non-competes, they also say that non-competes promote fair competition, help workers' wages, incentivize innovation. Frankly, that does not make sense to me. And I'm sure the people at the Chamber of Commerce had a nice little chuckle to themselves when they said that non-compete agreements somehow promote competition. Because this week on Words Mean What They Mean, it's hard to see how a non-compete would do anything except eliminate competition. Remember how the FTC estimated that non-competes cost us $300 billion a year annually? Well, part of that is because even a single employer in a job market with a non-compete can lock up entire sections of the labor pool for everyone else. So now anyone unfortunate to work for that one employer, it could be the only one in town who has non-competes. Anyone who works for them, well, they're stuck. And this can cause wages to be lower because now there's no competition for that labor. In short, even one business locking down its employees with non-competes can fundamentally disrupt the very thing supporters of non-competes claim they care about, free markets, fair competition and opportunities for workers. But what do you think about all this? Do non-compete agreements make sense? And if so, should there be limits on how they're used? And what about frontline workers, the line cooks, the security guards, the guy making copies at the ground floor of an office? Is there any reason to restrict these people's job prospects? And if so, how much of a hit to the economy is worth it? At the end of the day, what really matters is how these agreements affect you. Does it make the price of goods more expensive in your area? Does it make it harder for you to get a living wage or move up the career ladder? Does it make it harder for you or your friends to start your own businesses? At the end of the day, we have to look at these legal mechanisms and ask ourselves as a society, is the benefit we get from non-competes outweighed by the cost? And I hope that somewhere in the comments, someone has the answer. I can't take no love.